So if we think about network design and design and computer science in general as being based on incentives, and we go back to the 1960s when networks were first being born, the incentive was really to get machines talking to each other. So security was not really top of mind. And as we transition and technology starts to get better, we start to see these islands of networks forming within companies and academia. In the early 90s, the internet starts to hit a critical point where there are enough disparate networks connected together that something useful on a global scale can be done. And we start to see things like SSL and cryptography come into play where useful transactions can happen. And so what we see is a push for every kind of business, both small and large, to start connecting to this global platform. But this presents a problem because in the 1990s, in the computer science and network engineering world, we didn't really have a good model around security. What does it mean when you have your small network that you control and now you're connecting to this large global thing that doesn't have the same levels of security controls in it? And so what people did at the time is they looked back on classic security models that had nothing to do with computer networks. And we kind of settled on this notion of a castle and a moat. And that's what we call network perimeter security today. As more and more companies came online, moving their assets and markets and all of their critical infrastructure there, so too did we see criminal enterprises, the rise of hackers, et cetera, realizing that that's where the targets are now and becoming more sophisticated to attack them. If you're an attacker, your incentive is to get inside of that network perimeter, steal the crown jewels, and then get out. In effect, we're defending against these kind of attacks with a network security model that's 40 plus years old. In order to meet the security demands of today, we must rethink that old architecture.